When I was a child, a few years ago, I lived outside of Philadelphia. And it was a hilly area. And during the winter time, every once in a while, we get a nice snowstorm. And so there would be no school, which made us very happy when there was no school. And we'd go into, like I would go into my basement and I would get out my sled. And I would go to the top of the hill and I'd get on my sled and I'd slide down the hill, get to the bottom, walk back up to the top, go down again, do that all day long. And then I'd come home and I'd go to bed and there was the most wonderful sleep because I was so tired by that time. Now, most of you cannot relate to that, but you can relate to something else because I have two sons that can relate to this. When they were little kids, we would go to water slides. We climb up to the top of the water slide, we slide down, go over and over again. Probably about the third or fourth time, I would tell them now, I'm old, I'm gonna just wait for you guys to get up there and do it and come down. And they'd have so much fun. And it was just something really amazing. And it was, and actually it was physics. And I said to my sons, now you remember this because when you take physics someday, they're going to be talking about this in class. And they would say to me, Daddy, can't we just have fun? We really don't want to talk about the physics. Let's just go have fun right now. And we would do that, they would do that all day long. So that's what we're going to do in this experiment. This experiment is on page 12. It's motion along an incline. And what we're going to do is we're going to put something at the top of a hill, like that. Now up there it has energy, which they didn't worry about when they're eight or 10 years old. But at the top of the hill they're going to have potential energy, and if they're not moving they would have no kinetic energy. And then they'd let go and they would slide down the hill, and you would too if you were on a water slide. And you go down the hill and what you would do is you gain kinetic energy and you lose potential energy. So that's the, this experiment all about, about it. This is a really fun experiment that you, most of you can relate to. So let's come on up here and I'm gonna just, just show the equipment now, okay? My assistant can follow me. All right, now I already pre-measured this. Here's the optics, like a little cart. And I'm gonna turn, turn on a machine and the air will come through these little pinholes and so this is like air hockey. The friction is almost as reduced as negligible. There's just almost a zero. And it's just gonna slide down this hill to the end. So let's give it a try. There it goes. Gradually picks up speed. And that's the end of the experiment. But it was definitely not as much fun as no. when you had <laughs> with the yeah. old days, <laughs> the water slides. Well, I'm gonna raise up a little bit higher because that didn't work as much as I wanted it to. And this is gonna take about 30 seconds for me to measure this. So that comes out to be about five centimeters in. So let's lift this thing up. Using the incredible force. <laughs> and we're gonna try it again now. Right? Now I'm gonna do it again. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it go from about here. <clears throat> that is now going to be about five centimeters up. It's going to come down. Potential energy is going to gain kinetic energy. And the one thing I'm going to do this time is I want to measure the time. How long it takes to go from there up to just about here. All right, so my assistant, are you ready? Ready. Okay. Alright, 
just about nine seconds, so I want to try it again. Because I actually do not have a stopwatch. So we can go back to the board now, we'll just work this problem out. And it's a fun problem, but it's short. And I think you will enjoy the fact that it's a short experiment. Now I do need my marker. I have it right here. Well, at the top of the motion, the thing had potential energy. But it wasn't moving. So there's no kinetic energy at the top. At the bottom it has no potential energy. Ran out of height going down. But now it has kinetic energy. So MGH, the top, is equal to one half MV squared at the bottom. But do you see that I see? Yes, you do. The mass cancels out. At least in theory, it will cancel out. Which means that G times H, one half V squared, multiplying both sides by two, But I measured the height earlier, and the height came out to be five centimeters. So this becomes two times 9.8, and five centimeters is 0 0.05 meters. Now I'm gonna get out my calculator and work this out. Well, two times 0.5 is 1, 1 times 9.8 is 9.8. So this is going to come out to be 0.98 meters squared per second squared. Now using my calculator, I think the square root of 0.98 is about 0.99. Let's find out. Alright, so the square root. 0.98 comes out to be 0.99. Well, I cannot tell what the speed was though on the way down. But there's something that we can do, we go way back to chapter two. And in chapter two, do you remember the formula that looks like this? way back at the beginning of the semester. Well, I measured the length of that incline, measured how long it was going to go, and it comes out to about uh, 384 centimeters. And I know the speed here is 0.99 at the bottom. I know the speed at the top was zero. And there's the timer like that. Now 0.99 divided by 2 should be about 0.495. So that means the time is going to be 3.84 divided by 0.495 seconds. And we'll see how close it comes out to our answer. All right, so 3.84. divided by 0.495 and we get an answer about 7.8 meters per second. 
seconds rather. Well, assistant, you can sit down again now for a minute. Just leave that running though. What happened? <clears throat> we said nine, it came out to be what? A little less than eight. So what did I do wrong? What did I ignore? Exactly. On the way down, what do we run into? Air resistance, friction. And as a result, we're off by maybe about maybe 15 or 20%. Remember way back at the beginning of the semester, our first, or I guess the second experiment, we talked about Felix Baumgartner, that was 100 years ago now, but he jumped out of an airplane from a height of 120,000 feet. On the way down, there was very little air resistance, so he, his speed got up to about over 600 miles per hour. But then when he got in the lower atmosphere, air resistance began to build up until finally, the air resistance balanced out his weight and it reached a speed called the terminal velocity, T-E-R-M-I-N-A-L, terminal, T-E-R-M-I-N-A-L velocity. In this case, what happened was we didn't have much air resistance, air resistance, but it was enough to make a difference today. And so that's the end of this experiment. That one thing though, remember you have to do the review problem at the bottom of page 12 as part of your lab experiment. Now maybe we may get lucky and we may be back in class face to face before this experiment comes up, but we'll see what happens. All right, my assistant.